Hello, I'm David Chaston with 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This is where you get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, including news Americans seem to have been drinking optimism juice. Fed boss Ben Bernanke has turned upbeat. At a speech over the weekend, he described a future in which competition to produce innovation will yield ever greater rewards, sustaining and growing wealth. In fact, Americans generally, not just Bernanke, feel better about their economic and financial prospects in early May as consumer sentiment rose to its highest level in nearly six years, an encouraging sign after other recent data has suggested broader US growth is calling. Some better signals from Europe emerged over the weekend too. Firstly, Spain has produced a trade surplus, its first in 40 years, but is not from booming exports, rather a sharp fall on imports. Secondly, car sales in Europe are growing again, breaking an 18-month losing streak. China's new home prices rose in all but two cities in April, with housing values accelerating in key centres including Beijing and Shanghai, as buyers defied their government's latest round of property measures. Something similar may have happened in the US. Home sales reports are due out this week and are also expected to show gains. The Aussie banks are starting a home loan war across the ditch. For years, they just focused on variable rate lending. But times are changing there, and home, the home loan market is getting to look more like New Zealand with its emphasis on fixed rate contracts. Following falling wholesale costs, Westpac is now offering one-year fixed rates at 4.79%, but only in Australia. It may be a poor term for New Zealand, however, as the international money markets Westpac New Zealand accesses will be the same. The difference, though, will be the RBNZ core funding limits. In the interests of financial stability, banks here must source growing proportion of funds domestically. And here's something we should keep an eye on. China's giant state electricity grid operator has a $50 billion war chest to invest overseas. It just made a $1 billion deal to take a 20% stake in Australia's last, largest power distributor. But rating agencies weren't impressed. So far, they've spent $5 billion on Australia buying infrastructure. And the Chinese SOE is currently reported to be looking at buying a stake in New Zealand's Power Co. The New Zealand dollar starts today quite a bit lower at 80.6 US cents, tracking the falling Aussie dollar lower and its lowest level since September 2012, 82.9 Aussie cents, and our TWI now stands at 76.3. I'm David Chaston. That was 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.